What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today I'm going to be sharing my top nuclear tips for Black Ops 3. This is something I get asked about very, very often, especially on my live streams, and I wanted to make a video where I put like all of my nuclear tips together into one video, because I have shared several nuclear tips in the past, but they've kind of been all split up, and they haven't really been all put into one singular video, so that's what this is all about today. Alright guys, so let's hop right into it here, and I'm going to start off with class setups. Now this is something that I feel a lot of people put way too much emphasis on when going for nuclear medals. It's not the class setups that are allowing people to get consistent nuclear medals. It's more so the skill level of the player, as well as the playstyle and the mindset that they have. So, don't put too much emphasis on class setups, but there are a few things that you can definitely consider. The biggest thing is versatility is very important when going for nuclears. I'm not saying you can't get nuclears with shotguns or sniper rifles or something like that, but to make it easier, it's usually better to use guns that are really good in a variety of situations. You want to be a versatile player, especially if you're somebody that's just starting to try and get nuclears, or you've maybe er only earned a few nuclears before and you want to start earning them more consistently. Try to use setups that are versatile. Next up, use what's comfortable for you and fits your playstyle. That's something that a lot of people also screw up, is they just copy and paste class setups from like YouTubers or friends or whatever it might be, and they don't really consider the different playstyle and mentality that they may have compared to those other players. So the biggest thing with class setups is use what's comfortable for you as well as versatile and will allow you to excel in the most situations possible. Next up, I want to really quickly just talk about specialists. The basic thing with specialists is just ask yourself, is this specialist going to help you stay alive longer and continue your streak? Power weapon kills do count towards nuclear medals, but a big thing to consider with them is usually it's like a risk reward sort of thing. Like a Tempest for instance, it's kind of a high risk high reward. So if you hit a guy with a Tempest, it can arc to like three other guys and there you go, you suddenly have four more kills added to your streak. But if you miss a shot with the Tempest, a lot of the time you're going to be dead because there is that charge up time in order to fire, and therefore it is a high risk, high reward, and you really have to take that into account when you're playing. For me personally, I tend to lean towards specialist abilities that are going to keep me alive longer, rather than power weapons for streaks, but use what you're comfortable with. As for score streaks, just in case you guys don't happen to know, score streak kills do not directly contribute towards your nuclear streak. So therefore, the non-lethal streaks are usually preferred. And obviously, the most important streak and the most helpful streak for nuclears is the hater. I don't think anybody would really argue this. It shows you exactly where every single one of the enemies are, as well as the direction they're facing in real time. This is going to help you continue your gun streak significantly. Also, UAV, counter UAV, I really like these just because they help you get up to that hater faster. And power core can also be a good choice. One thing that a lot of people don't really consider though is sometimes lethal streaks can be very helpful even though the kills from them don't directly contribute. What I mean by this is like a hardened sentry for instance, you can use that to watch a lane and watch your flank and get a full cutoff on a lane and therefore you can focus more of your energy in front of you and, and be killing people with your gun more effectively because you don't have to worry about those people coming on your flank. So there is something to be said for some lethal streaks helping you in some situations just realize they're not directly contributing towards the nuclear metal. Alright, so that pretty much covers everything pre-game, like getting set up for that nuclear streak. Now let's talk about the most important part, and that is your playstyle as well as your mindset while going for a nuclear metal. The playstyle that I recommend, it's not the only playstyle to get nuclears with, but the one that I feel helps me get the most consistent nuclears is a push-pull sort of playstyle. That's how I like to define it. There has to be some aggression in this streak. If you're just camping all the time, a lot of the times you won't even get 30 kills in a match, or you'll become predictable and easy to take out. This is where that push-pull comes in. So the push means you are aggressive. You are pushing up for map control. You are pushing the enemies back towards their spawn a little bit, and you're forcing your enemies to have to come to you if they're pushed back into their spawn. And having the enemies come to you is ideal, because you can be the one that's set up, waiting for them, and able to take them out. Now the problem if you always push, or you're just pushing up to one area and then you're basically just staying there, is you become predictable, or you get into situations where you get in over your head and you just can't handle it and you end up getting yourself killed. This is where the pull has to come in. Always have an escape route. No matter what situation you're putting yourself into, always have that plan of, if I don't like this situation, how can I get out of this situation safely so that I keep my streak going and I can attack again. 
What this usually means in game is always keep a safety net of teammates somewhere around you. You can be pushed up a little bit past your teammates. You just don't want to be pushing all the way into the enemy spawn all alone, getting yourself completely surrounded and having nowhere to go. Always keep some teammates nearby or a group of teammates nearby. That way, if you start to get into a situation that you don't like the feeling of, you don't feel really confident in, you can always just make a smart pull back away from the fight. This doesn't mean just turn your back and run though. I know a lot of people try to do that. Usually you don't want to just turn your back and run, especially when you know there's an enemy there. You'll just get shot in the back in those scenarios. But you just have to sort of recognize when you want to get out of there and make a smart play to get away from the fight. Regroup yourself. And then you can always make another push from a different angle or maybe the same angle. Whatever feels comfortable at the time. That's the thing with pushes as well. You want to make smart pushes. Make sure you're still utilizing cover. Make sure you're not pushing in too far and make sure you're prepared for enemies that might be set up waiting for you. So how do you know when you've sort of overstayed your welcome and you do have to pull back a little bit? Part of that just comes down to experience and instinct. You just have to feel like, okay, I've definitely been here for too long. They are starting to make uh, different plays on me to try and figure out how to take me out of this position. I need to get out of there. But a good rule of thumb a lot of the times is if you get like two or three kills within one area, it's probably time to move because those people are going to be coming back for you they're going to know how you're set up, and a smart player will find a creative way to take you out of that position. So, you don't want to be overstaying your welcome at all, and usually, after you pick off a few kills, it's probably time to change position in some way. So that's the basic playstyle that I like to use when going for nuclear metals. I find this is great because you remain unpredictable, you still remain aggressive, so you're still getting enough kills to get that nuclear metal in, in most games but you're being unpredictable and you're making smart decisions and you're also taking the pressure off yourself in a lot of situations. You're not always putting yourself in that stressful situation where your mind's just racing. You do take the time every now and then to back away from the fight, regroup your thoughts, reload your gun, figure out what's going on and then attack again. That's why I love this playstyle. So playstyle is very important, but it has to go hand in hand with a mindset in my opinion. This is where a lot of people really fall down when they're going for nuclear metals. It's their mindset rather than their playstyle. I know tons of people that have that skill and the raw talent to be able to earn nuclear medals, but they get in their own head too often and because of that they either have never earned a nuclear or they just don't earn them as consistently as they should be. With mindset, I'm basically just going to cover a bunch of like bullet points that I have jotted down because I don't really know how to make them all flow together, but there are definitely a few things that get in the way of people getting the nuclear streaks. And the first one is thinking too much about the nuclear when you're on a really low streak. I know people that like from kill one are already thinking about trying to get that nuclear medal. And in my opinion, this is just setting yourself up for failure. The reason for this is it changes the way you play. Usually it causes you to play more defensively and therefore you actually set yourself up for less potential nuclear streaks. Instead, what I would do is not even consider a nuclear streak until you get your hater. Once you get your hater, then you can start to realize, yes, I'm on a streak, let's keep this going. Now you can start thinking about it. But until you get there, if you aren't actively thinking about that nuclear streak while getting up to your hater, usually you're going to earn haters more often because you'll allow yourself to be a little bit more aggressive. You'll be thinking about the game a little bit more than the actual nuclear streak itself. And the more haters that you're getting yourself, the more often you're setting yourself up for a potential nuclear streak. So don't be afraid to hop on that B flag at the beginning of a game or at the beginning of your life or something like that. Don't be afraid to do that. These are the types of things that are going to allow you to get that hater up faster. Once you have that hater up, now that's going to really kick off that streak for you and get you on your way to a nuclear medal. Next up, I want to talk about something that happens when a lot of people choke their nuclear streak. So they get pretty close and then they end up dying or something like that. A lot of people get way too hard on themselves when they end up choking the nuclear medals. Yes, it sucks. I realize it's frustrating. It's annoying. It's happened to me many, many times. Actually, I, d I think I have like five times as many brutals as I have nuclears. It's crazy. I get brutals fairly often and then choke the nuclear. It's kind of ridiculous. But realize if you're getting a brutal medal, you're definitely doing something right. You went on an amazing streak and you should use that to fuel your next streak rather than get really down on yourself and basically destroy your own confidence. Use these streaks to build your confidence rather than tear your confidence down. Learn from any mistakes you made while you were on that streak and use that for your next streak. Moving on to the final point about mindset that I want to talk about. This is talking about 
when you get really close to that nuclear metal. You're starting to get there, maybe you're only like five kills away or three kills away or something along those lines. What tends to happen with a lot of people is they really tense up and they really start thinking about how many kills they need. Their entire mindset shifts to how many more kills do I need? Or they might know how many more kills they need and they're actively counting down their kills. They're like, okay, I only need three more, only need three more, only need three more. And their entire focus in their brain is on a number in their head rather than what's actually going on in the game. And therefore that hinders their decision-making ability or at least their really quick decision-making ability. And it often gets them killed and screws up their streak. Now the weird thing with this is I can't really just tell you stop counting kills or stop thinking about that because if anything that's going to make you think about it even more because you're going to be actively thinking about stopping thinking about that. Really weird situation like that, you guys know how it works. Instead, I'd rather have you guys replace that thought of counting kills and uh, worrying about how many kills you need, replace that with a simple question. How am I going to get my next kill safely? This one has helped me finish off so many nuclear streaks or whatever challenge I might have been going for, maybe I'm going for like a mothership or something along those lines, that very simple mindset, it takes me out of my own head and gets my head back into the game itself, which allows me to make smarter decisions more effectively. Another little mind trick that you can often play on yourself when you start to get really close to that nuclear streak is instead of counting how many kills you need to get that nuclear and really focusing on that nuclear metal, I like to start thinking about how many unstoppable metals I'm going to earn on this streak. Just in case you guys don't know, you get an unstoppable medal for every kill you get after a nuclear medal is earned. So this shifts my focus away from the nuclear itself, and the nuclear just becomes a stepping stone onto my real goal, and it takes a lot of that stress away. Once that stress is gone, it makes that nuclear medal so much easier to earn, and I found this little trick has helped me finish off my streaks quite effectively in the recent past. So there we have it. That's going to wrap it up for today's video with my tips on how to get nuclear medals. Now keep in mind, these tips aren't the only way to get nuclear medals. Some people might disagree with a few things, and if it doesn't work for you, that's totally fine. This is what works for me, and I'm confident that it's going to work for at least a bunch of you guys. I'd love to know in the comment section below, what other tips do you guys have for earning nuclear medals more effectively? Please let me know in the comment section below. That will allow people to also go down there and see different perspectives on earning nuclear medals, and maybe they'll pick up something that I missed in this video. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.